Due to Nigeria's slow start in implementing the MDG's action plan to eradicate poverty, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on MDGs needed to find a mechanism that would bridge the gap between federal and state governments. Discussions with governors indicated a demand to improve intergovernmental fiscal cooperation and to integrate investment into development plans. The National Assembly members were also keen to find innovations to effectively implement public projects. As a result, in 2007, the CGS was introduced. The CGS would allow for both the federal and state government to contribute counterpart funding to projects. As for the um, CGS to the st state, we're equally reinvesting and increasing our investment to the states and looking at governance, even within the states, policies they can put in place that can help them achieve the MDGs within this short frame of time. We are equally improving our implementation actions. We are bringing, bringing the focal persons, the implementation, implementing bodies within the state to have a pre-implementation workshop which will go on to facilitate our transfer of this money and their utilization of the money in areas that they really, really need the money to affect the lives of the individuals. The objective of the conditional grant scheme is to empower the rural populace and raise their living standards through appropriate resource use and management. Although many people are benefiting from these projects, many are yet to reap these benefits. Investments in over 2,844 primary health care facilities, training of 6,673 health workers and provision of 2.4 million long-lasting insecticide-treated nets, 3,524 small-town boreholes with solar-powered pumps, 631 boreholes with hand pumps, 393 small-town water supply schemes, and 3,709 VIP toilets. That is why today the MDG's office has decided to scale up the local government areas receiving the benefits of the conditional grant schemes to 113 LGAs. This will go a long way in impacting the lives of many poor people across the rural areas in the country. 130 local government areas and federal capital territory are participating in the exercise, which is intended to scale up investment in key sectors of the MDGs covering primary health care and education. We're scaling up our releases to the, to the state and local government. And to the local government, we're taking up the... 113 local governments with very low indices in meeting of the Millennium Development Goal. We're releasing money to them and they'll be funding on 50-50% basis. They will provide 50% of the fund and we'll be able to provide 50% of the fund. That's what we're going to do. It also aims to fast-track the achievements of the MDGs in Nigeria by building the capacity and planning competence of the 113 local government areas participating. This will support the scale-up of MDGs investment and direct resource and policy attention towards priority sectors, weak indicators and service delivery bottlenecks. In increasing the value for money, coordination and impact of interventions, a genuine partnership between the three tiers of government and with local communities is expected to evolve. In environment, we had basically an agricultural initiative. We call the Community Agriculture, uh, Empowerment Agricultural Initiative. That is the CEAI, where we are empowering 180 communities through their cooperative uh, groups. We open up 10 hectares of land for them. They decide the type of crops they want to plant for a year, two major crops. We support them with uh, insecticides, I mean, uh, herbicides. We support them with fertilizers. And we support them with tractorization, tractors to clear up the land. And whatever they produce at the end of the day belongs to them. The coming year will reduce the level of support by 30%. The second year we'll do that. In the third year, we'll remove our own support and allow the communities. We will empower them a lot. 
Funds for the conditional grant scheme were first allocated under the 2007 budget where they were focused on health, water and power sectors. It is on record that these funds have provided flexibility to state to design projects that reflect their local development strategies and MDG priorities, while the competitive nature of the funding ensures that only sustainable and high quality projects are approved. The MDG's office is in collaboration with international organizations towards the success of the Conditional Grant Scheme initiative. The United Kingdom Department for International Development has been partnering with the MDG's office in Nigeria since 2009 through the State Partnership for Accountability, Responsiveness and Capability by improving the criteria for selection of projects, assisting with the evaluation process in the design and coordination of the local government conditional grant scheme. MDG itself needs about 1.3 trillion naira per annum to be able to effectively reach out to all the goals and we are only getting 110 billion per annum so that is a bit of a, a challenge but i know that if the states and the local government put in their own funds around the things that pertain to the mdgs in relation to governance in relation to beefing up the amount that goes to their community goes to the the local government within their states to reduce poverty to ensure that children are in school to ensure that their women are empowered more than what they are getting from um, the CGS track. That will also enhance our meeting the Millennium Development Goals. Collaboration with international organizations has helped MDG's office towards the Conditional Grant Scheme initiative and it has improved the lives of many rural poor in Nigeria. The office of the MDGs is committed to improving the living and health standards of Nigerians through projects like the Conditional Grant Scheme. It also believes with all hands on deck, the office believes the MDGs will be achievable by the year 2015.